All right, today we're going to be looking at Vinshin. We have uh, already have a previous video of how to install Vinshin. So if you haven't had that in experience or you haven't uh, need to be able to install Vinshin, go ahead and watch the other video. But in this video, we're going to go ahead and create our first backup job and get our backups rolling on our server because we need to do that quick because, you know, we got live servers out there. We need to get backups rolling on them, right? So the first thing we're going to do is go into resources and we're going to go to storage. And this is where we're going to add our first storage device. All right, so once you get to the storage list area, we're going to add our storage device because first we need somewhere to put our backups, right? So we need a storage device, whether that's a NAS, another file server, um, you know, whatever you might have in place. So we're going to click on add here and we're going to add a SIF uh, as our storage type. But like I said, if you have, you know, uh, a fiber channel or, um, you know, offsite storage device, uh, things like that. Maybe you have an external uh, hard drive plugged into this and you have it mapped through VMware, you know, whatever you might have. We're going to go ahead and do a SIF share for us though. We're going to put in our path to our, we have actually a Synology NAS, right? So this Synology NAS, is that's the IP address of it. And we're going to do slash backup slash, uh, we'll just name this Vention. So once we have that in there, now we need to make sure we create a folder with this name in that share, right? So we're gonna log into our Synology server. As you can see, we got that share called backups. We're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna name that Vention. Click okay. So you can see now we have that folder Vention and is now on our NAS. Um, this is our Synology NAS that we are, have here on the same network. So let's go back to our um, Vention instance here. So we're gonna type in the uh, username and password to connect to that SIF share. And we're just named the SIF share one. Uh, we'll put in a uh, Synology so we know uh, where that's located. The storage is going to be used as our backups, right? And we're not importing any backups, so we didn't, don't need to choose any of this because this is a brand new instance. And we do want the storage alert on. So if there's a, we're going to change this to 15%. So once it reaches 15% left, it's going to let us know and hit click on OK. Now, if you have the credentials right and the path right, Everything should be happy and it should just get at it and it'll show that it's online and happy. So let's find out what it's going to do here. There we go. So it's online, normal. You can see our capacity, how much free space we have, um, all that good stuff. Now you're thinking, okay, well, now we're done. So let's now let's get some backups on it and just checking all these settings. Yep, that looks all good. So now we have all that done. We have our storage instance set up. Now we need to go to infrastructure and go to virtual platform. So this is where we're gonna add our ESXi server. So now go click on add, and we're gonna select our platform. So like I said, there's tons of platforms that they support, whether it's Proxmox, Citrix, Hyper-V. So we're gonna type in our VMware uh, IP address, which is 192.168.8.237, I believe. It's gonna ask us for that root uh, password now of course if you're uh, you change your username for your ESXi instance then not then put that in so we're going to name this our ESXi main host and click on OK now like I said if everything's happy it's gonna completely add and say show online and there's one more step we have to do before we actually go and create our VMware backup job and look at that it added very quickly so you can see it's online it's connected um, now you can see that you're getting a little red thing here that says unlicensed. So we need to make sure we license it or we can't create a backup job. So we're going to click on license and checkbox this and we're going to go ahead and license. So this is if you have multiple servers and let's say uh, you're moving one license to another server. This is how easy you can move your license to other servers if you only have like a two CPU account or you know a server count thing, right? Um, so we went ahead and license. You can see it's online. Close out of this. And we should have a green, yep, all license checkbox there. And once that's all happy, so we got our virtual uh, platform uh, set up and connected. We have our NAS share to store our backups connected. Now the next thing to do is create that backup job. So we're gonna go to virtual machines here and woo, you can see all of our virtual machines are now showing. So if I go back to our uh, hypervisor here and click on virtual machines, you can see all of our virtual machines here. We have about eight of them. And we go back here and it's reflecting those eight. So now we're at a point where we can back up any virtual machine. 
our MySQL server is our very important SQL server. We need to make sure that's backed up, right? And you can see it's unprotected. So let's go ahead and get that protected. So we're going to checkbox this and we're going to create a new job. So we're going to click on that. We're going to also make sure it's checked here. Perfect. Click on next. And we're going to pick our backup destination, which is our target node. So if you have multiple nodes, because you got multiple invention nodes, which is uh, pretty awesome. You're going to see that that four terabyte space that we added, that SIF share on that Synology server. We're going to select that. Click on next. Now here's the important part. It di this is different for every use case, right? Some people want full backups, you know, once a month or whatever. Uh, to me, I want incremental backups. Uh, but like I said, it depends on one scope. You can also do one-off backups, which is great. But we're going to do backup as scheduled, and we're going to do increment backups. And let's say we want to back up every day of the week except for the weekend because no one's at the office maybe, right? So we'll just check that. You can also do every – wow, there's so many options here. Every other week. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um so let's go down here. So it's going to do, uh, looks like we have it set for weekly full backups. Um, so actually we need to change that there. And we're going to do daily incremental backups. So that's perfect. Um, and you can change it to monthly, weekly. That's that's pretty cool. All right. And you can see our start time. So that's like, uh, what, 1 o'clock, I believe. Uh, so we'll do uh, 02. So it would be like about 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, it'll start those jobs, right? So we're going to hit all oh, those throttling you can do, which is awesome. Data storage policy. Uh, you can uh, deduplicate uh, data, uh, your retention policy. Um, so like I said, this is all customizable for your environment, right? Everyone's environment is going to be different. Uh, I'm just doing this as a demo, so I'm just trying to go through uh, what normally, hopefully, people would do. So now we hit next. And now it's giving you a review and confirmation, right? So you can see our backup mode is scheduled. You can see it's doing full backups every Monday and then incremental backups daily, which is awesome. Um, data storage policy, you know, all that good stuff. And we're going to hit submit. And now that job will be created in our virtual machine list here. Perfect. There you go. And you can see it's pending. So now most likely the next job will start uh, at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Um, but I believe you can force it here. So if we go to options, there you go. Yep. You can start full or start incremental. So I'm going to go ahead and start a full backup. Because I want to show you something that's pretty interesting with this software is not only it's a great backup and recovery solution, but you can do an instant recovery. And what that means is it, it actually mounts uh, a VMDK file almost to your host so you can instantly mount a backup from like a month ago and find files on there, restore those files, and then shut it down and remove it. I mean, it, it is pretty awesome. So we, like I said, we got to wait for this backup to run. I believe it's about 20 something gigs, so it won't take too long here. Once it's done, we're going to show you how you can quickly mount that to your XSA host on a live uh, backup, which is pretty awesome. All right, we're back at our homepage, and you can now see that that one backup job we uh, forced to do is not completed. It didn't take that long at all. So if we go to VMs and go to our virtual machines, you can see that this VM also now shows protected, which is great. Um, it shows the backup size and everything of it. Now, let's say something happens to that server, right? And you're like, oh, no, I need to restore a certain backup. So perfect, right? So let's go to Invention, click on Restore, and we're going to do... Now you can do full restore so you can fully restore that virtual machine to that host. Um, so you can perfectly do that. But let's say, uh, you know, let's say it's a terabyte of storage, right? And you're like, man, it's going to take forever to restore. So instead of maybe doing a full restore, you can do an instant restore. Which keep in mind, if you're going to be restoring the server and having it, you know, online forever because you're restoring it because maybe the other server crashed or whatever might have happened, then you need to make sure that you do a full backup then or, for, or a full restore. This is only if you need to grab like maybe one file or two files and then you're going to delete the uh, the restore uh, VM after you're done, right? So I'm going to show you. So let's go ahead and instant restore. We're going to select our, uh, our virtual machine that we were backing up and we're going to do that backup that we just did like 10 minutes ago. So we're going to select that. Target host, of course, is going to be that same host, but you can add multiple hosts that you can restore to our backup node here and it's going to be just loading in the settings and details here so we're going to load this in and then once that's done then we'll be able to hit ok and it'll restore 
uh, or do an instant VM that we can boot up, and it's actually going to be reading off that Synology NAS. Um, it's going to be a little bit slower, but like I said, it's better than restoring maybe terabytes of data just for one or two file, right? You can do an instant restore. So we're going to just the default, you know, 30, oh, we don't need to do 32 gigs. We'll just do 16. Um, and then we'll change this to test and hit OK. Now it's going to do that restore job. We'll take a couple minutes, but let's go ahead and go to our E6i instance. And let's see if that VM uh, gets created here. So we haven't seen anything come up yet, and we notice that it's still in a pending status. So I think you just have to do start job under options, and it'll probably force uh, start that job. So let's see what it's doing now. Uh, once we go into here, look at that. Created NAS data store. It looks like it mounted. Oh, look at that. It, oh, now it's working. Okay, so it looks like you manually had to start the job. So like I said, it already created that. It mounted the Synology uh, NAS. So let's go ahead and see if we can start this and see if it actually starts up. So we're going to start on here. Now, like I said, this will be a little bit slower. Oh, oh, look at that. It's booting up that um, boon to my, my SQL server. So look at that. You can instantly restore a virtual machine just by doing the instant restore and it mounts that backup store to your host. So you can start up that virtual machine, get whatever you need off it, and then shut it down and then delete it. That is pretty awesome. And I'll do a quick demo of how to do a full backup. That's going to be pretty much the same thing that we just did. Go to uh, restore and then go to full restore. So now we're in a, let's say our situation is that virtual machine has now completely died and we want to do a full restore, right? So we're going to click on that uh, virtual machine, that backup point. We're going to restore to that same host. Yep, that's fine. Looks like we got to click, click it there. We got our SQL server. And you can adjust the CPU and memory from here. We're going to leave everything to the default. We're going to do this as a once-off restore. Or you can schedule the restore, which is pretty cool. Uh, click on next and restore one. That's fine. And submit. Now let's see if this job automatically runs. And then uh, now since we're done with this restore test, uh, go ahead and power down that server, which we already powered. Oh, wow, look at that. We didn't even have to do that one. Look, it's already running and it's restoring that data. Awesome. All right, so now since we're done with the instant restore, let's go ahead and go to that instant restore test and do stop, and let's see what it does here. And stop and restore to reserve. Yep, that's fine. Click OK. And you can see now that we have our restore test stopped, it removed it from our host now. And we're going to go ahead and delete this because we're not going to need that anymore. And click OK. And you can see our uh, VM full restore is still going. Um, oh, looks like, did it finish? I think it did. Um, let's go to our history jobs. And yeah, you can see our full backup. Wow, that was quick. It's already done. So let's go back. And there's our restore of our SQL server. We're going to hit power on and make sure that works. And look at that, it's booting up my uh, the Ubuntu server with MySQL installed on it. Perfect, so that worked flawless. And, and to be honest, that was pretty quick, but keep in mind, this was only about a 10 gig um, virtual machine. If you've got a Windows machine made with like a three terabyte you know, store on it, you know, that's obviously gonna take a lot longer, right? But I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I just wanna show you how quick and easy Vention is, uh, creating backup jobs, um, doing quick restores, doing full restores, um, it's very quick and intuitive. I love their interface. That's the thing that I love about the Vention software is their interface is, is just awesome, right? Because you have your private cloud area. You have uh, how many VMs you're being protected, how much uh, backup data is actually being pulled off. Um, so you know how much storage you're being utilized. I mean, it's really great. And you got the system monitor, the net flow. I mean, this is all really great. This is a great interface to have in your IT department, like to have up on a TV. You know, showing off like, look at all our backup jobs. You can see if anything's being, anything's getting failed. Uh, it does backup verification, which is amazing. This is what you want, so you know your backups are in good working order. Um, now we talked mainly about uh, VMware, Synology, doing those backups, right? But there's so much more you can do. You can do NAS backups. You can do public cloud. You can do Microsoft 365, so you can backup things in that infrastructure in the cloud. I mean, 
this is unlimited they have so many options so many different setups you know definitely check them out it's vincent.com um, i hope this video was helpful you guys and i'll see you guys in the next one